I got home the other day and I they couldn't get a note on that and I screwed with it and I fell it up. It's on your uncle and a little deal that you stick into the side and it worked its way out. It's still in there, but it worked its way out enough to work. Yeah. Yeah. But you wouldn't do anything. I'm Thank you. I'm running through I'm I'm earnestly praying there'll be no computers in heaven. Uh, today's deposit for my check. Is that all right? And she'll figure our today's deposit was 300 So she'll say, yeah, if that's what you want. Yeah. Yeah. That'll work. She can't hardly get her out of bed because she doesn't have any air, which means that, you know, that's in her lungs or she's got that pneumonia. And so we really need to, we need to really keep her in prayer. Hey, I'm trying to, trying to get by there and get some food and stuff like that. Yeah, they put him on disability, but he hadn't got no money for it yet, yeah. so you don't know where they're. Well, she ain't been able to work, that's it. I don't know. Yeah, he thought you had to say your back is. I said, well, I said, whatever you want, don't let them operate on that back. That's what they were afraid of, that they were going to operate on the back. She's supposed to go one day uh, for her appointments and see what they were going to do. Mm -hmm. So, but now that she's sick with that, she'll just have appointments. Yeah. 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 Jesus comes on the night of the Super Bowl. I, mean, I don't know. Oh, I bet he'd have a bunch of great face Christians. Uh, yeah. I don't know. We wouldn't have a, we wouldn't have any problem finding our way up to it there because uh, 
and all the gory faces and like that. Larry. Frank, I Father, we love you tonight. We just rejoice, God, in you. It's been Lord, a good day, and Lord, we just thank you for all the blessings. God, for the goodness and love. We pray, God, for those who are sick tonight. Lord, I pray for Terry, that God, you just go and, yes, Lord, Lord, God, touch her, God, that, Lord, you're going to heal this pneumonia, Father. You're going to deliver from this COVID, Father, that, Lord, you're going to be revived, God, and touch his back, Father. And, Lord, uh, uh, just uh, just bless that family, God, and help them be back in church. I pray, Father, for Mona tonight, God, that you'd be with her. And, Lord, give her wisdom, God, as to concerning, uh, Lord, uh, uh, God, going to the doctor, to take any shots or whatever she needs to do. Not saying she needs to take any shots, but, Lord, uh, God, uh, I, I just pray give her wisdom to know what to do. And, Lord, touch and give him. And I pray for Carl tonight, Lord, who God planned to be here this morning and didn't plan to be here tonight, but have been uh, sick all day, Lord, uh, God, uh, vomiting and so forth. We just pray that, Lord, you be with him. Uh, Father, others, Lord, I, I pray for uh, Kyle and Dean as they be traveling back this week for Kim and Sandy's are on the way back even now. Father, we just ask you be with, be with all those who have a part, Lord, in the church, Father. Lord, just bless and strengthen each one. May your perfect will be done in each of our lives. Praise you, Lord, in the perfect name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, since I've tried one this year, uh, before we start singing, let me uh, let me read this to you. Uh, I had it there. Lost it. Come on. This is from... Uh, Zelf and them, that uh, new family, uh, in text me on the way down here, says, Good evening, will not be attending tonight, and is in bed, not feeling well, and I have some things to take care of. Please pray for uh, Andrea. Uh, her allergies have been getting worse and are sometimes uh, debilitating. Uh, so keep them in prayer. I mentioned to him, Robert and Kara went by and visited him this afternoon. And uh, Kara has not only got pneumonia, but got that COVID, which we're familiar with. But uh, uh, Robert said that uh, she can hardly get out of bed now because she just doesn't have any air to breathe with. And she's concerned as to whether or not she's going to make it. So I told her we would be, we'd be praying for them. So keep Robert and Kara in prayer. Keep Mona in prayer and uh, uh, Carl in prayer. Carl, if you want to start coming back here, then I'm coming this morning, then I'm coming tonight. Uh, so I'll keep them in prayer. Okay, brother, go ahead. Uh, keep, and also remember Robert Terry Robertson, uh, he can't work because of his knee, and uh, she's not been able to work. Uh, she's got back problems also, so I don't even know if she's been able to work. So, uh, there might be a need there also. Uh, they might need, might need some food or something. 5.30. 5.30. Joy unspeakable. Maybe. Maybe we can sing it. Yeah, maybe we can. We'll try it. It's up here. Oh, 
singing or do you need to get home to that football game? Yeah, it might, uh, it might be a close one. I, okay, I'm just making sure I didn't, in fact, if you want to continue singing, we'll continue singing. Uh, the message is longer tonight than uh, we think it should be right now Christ. I will. <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't think Brother Larry is, though. I just want to let y'all know. I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't even know. I know who's in the Super Bowl, but I don't care who wins. Yeah. I, I, I make a prediction, though, and I know I'm going to be right about the Super Bowl. I predict that the team that scores the most points will win. That's right. Every time. Yeah. Amen. That is a. Uh, and who wins? I don't care. Okay. Uh, I and uh, Biden is trying to he's going to make another Supreme Court. Good news for you know, the Trump, the, the part of your opinion about Trump is uh, the best thing that he's done is the 23 Supreme Justices who are being true to what they claim to be. Uh, you know, Roberts from the Bush appointed him, uh, was supposed to be a conservative, and he turned out to be a liberal or uh, most folks, but the Supreme Court this week. Uh, refuse to change Texas's law concerning abortion. So Texas's law is uh, in force, and uh, uh, it means that nobody can have an abortion once the doctor can detect the heartbeat, which is uh, about six weeks. Amen. So that law stands in Texas now, and we can't be rescinded. Uh, uh, but um, uh, back. Uh, I know you won't remember, Troy and Mike, uh, I don't think one was at all night, but uh, uh, when President Eisenhower, back in the 50s, appointed the Supreme Justice, he, support, he, he appointed uh, Justice Black, who was supposed to be a conservative, but turned out to be a liberal who voted for Robert Supreme Leader and also uh, uh, off school. Eisenhower said the worst decision he ever made was uh, electing Black, appointing Black to the Supreme Court. 
let's pray that Biden will make the same mistake that Eisenhower made, and that is that Biden, uh, that, uh, Biden who is going to support, are going to appoint a liberal, will, instead of her turning out to be a liberal, will turn out to be a conservative, and uh, we'll have another uh, uh, <laughs> justice on the Supreme Court, who fears God. Uh, so, but since we really pray about uh, that God would give us another Supreme Justice uh, who is going to stand for a while against uh, Amen. 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 Do you thank the Lord and praise the Lord for the fact that the Supreme Court we have has really defended uh, the uh, Texas law? Yeah, yeah so well, I was trying to get the words out there. Uh, uh, you know, those that are for life. If you go to the state, they voted by not pro life. Uh, on the side. Amen. 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 One of these days, though, we'll all fly away and worry about it. I understand. I understand 100%. I understand exactly 100%. One of these days, we know all this. So be put down and be defeated. Yeah. Not to worry about this stuff. No well, since the government's up on the show, you need to be not. Yeah. And that's, that's not that talking about now. Too. Amen. I need to go the government, the government's up on Christ's shoulders, so to speak. Yeah. Amen. 648. I'll fly away. I feel like traveling on 
But I, I can sing it with you, Acapulco. Acapulco? Okay. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, if you want to, we'll, we'll I'll help it. you sing We'll do it Church of Christ style. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Okay. I did have the music to You already start this? You already started it. Oh, oh. sorry. Okay, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know how to sing that. All right. You ready, brother? Yeah, I'm ready. I can, I can, I can kind of. Take a little bit on it. Okay. It may not sound real good to Brother Larry's recording uh, this, but they'll get to see us alive and in person, right? Alive in person. It's in G. Okay. Well, I'll. I'll it it kind of gets up a little high for me sometimes. It'd be all right. Okay. I might have to change my pitch a little bit. Okay. Ready? Yeah. I wonder if it's so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came back to spring through the night. And praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. So happy, no sorrow inside, and praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like Drake, yeah, I'm ready. Just like a blind man, I wandered alone. Worries and fears I claim for my own. Then like a blind man, God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more night, now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside, and praise the Lord, I saw the light. Wonderful to wonder and stray. Straight is the gate and narrow the way. Now I have prayed in the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness. No more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. And praise the Lord, I saw the light. No way to go for that one. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Sad. And praise the Lord, I saw the light. Amen. 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 Good job, brother. He's doing great speckled birds in a couple of weeks. Great, I'll have to learn that. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. We'll find one. We'll find one we both know. Oh, I probably know it. I think I'll learn it. <laughs> That's another Roy Hickok great, great speckled bird. Yeah. I've heard the great speckled bird. Yeah. That was 
said that Red Speckled Bird was saying it was a pink. Who did you say had a beautiful voice? Who had beautiful voice? Sister Gray, you know, Madam Gray and Watt. Yeah. Or, Good out of each one out and uh, turn your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Galatians, um, or not Galatians, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13. It's right uh, next door to Galatians there. And uh, so um, I'm going to look at one verse of scripture. I had uh, uh, an individual out tonight, or was supposed to come out tonight, that um, um, I kind of. Um, thought that uh, he might need the message tonight. Uh, I don't try to gear my messages around people who might need them because the ones who I think might need them might not be the ones who need them and the ones I think don't need them might be the ones who need them. And so I just pray and ask the Lord to give me a, a message. But uh, sometimes when you observe how people live, you think, well, they're coming out tonight, and so um, uh, maybe they're in need of this. Uh, the truth of the matter is, all of us are evidently in need of it because the Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Paul to write it. So, if you look at Second uh, Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse five, uh, the Apostle tells the church, the Christians there at Corinth, and though there are a lot of problems in the church at Corinth. I'm sure there were some solid Christians there. Uh, uh, at least um, uh, I'm confident that uh, some were very much so Christians. And yet Paul writes this or preaches this to the congregation. And so maybe uh, it'll be someone here tonight. If not, maybe it'll be for someone on YouTube. And um, uh, I'm anxious um, to... Uh, uh, process the message this morning because uh, when we got through I, I don't ever look at the clock when I'm preaching and but when I looked at the clock after I got through preaching I thought my goodness did I preach that long but uh, I preached the message before I left the house this morning about 3 30 and uh, it only took me 42 minutes so I can't imagine it taking that long to preach it down here. So when I start to process, it'll tell me how many minutes I preached. So I know whether to blame me or to blame the Sunday school teacher or to blame the piano player. Uh, you know, uh, in other words, what time did I get the pulpit to start? And in actuality, it doesn't matter. Uh, a Ezra taught from um, morning till afternoon and then he invited the Levites to come in and and uh, give instructions so uh, uh, I'm confident that uh, a person who is really in love with the Lord and in love with God's word is not going to uh, be concerned uh, about um, how long you're here but look at verse 5 he says examine yourselves whether you be in the faith Prove your own selves. This word prove in the Greek is uh, uh, dokimeo, mezo, dokimezo, and uh, it, it means to try. It means to prove, to discern. In other words, uh, I try to discern whether or not what it's saying and what I am living, uh, you know, what the scripture is saying and what I'm living match up with each other. And then notice he goes on to say, he says, you examine yourself, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves, know ye not your own selves. The word know there uh, uh, means uh, to come to know. In other words, I think I know myself, but as I examine myself, I come to know whether what I thought uh was me is really me or not uh, and um, so uh, uh, Lois was asking me the other day she said where in the world did you get Tim uh, at and she says y'all aren't anything alike I said well we both got a good heart uh, you know uh, we are uh, quite different in several ways there but um, uh, anyway um, uh I think I know myself in the sense that I know I've got a good heart. Uh, uh, now, whether I match up to all that God's Word teaches or not, uh, 
that may be something I need to put to the test. I may need to examine myself more closely. I need to prove myself. I need to know myself. And uh, the best way I know of examining ourselves is to lay our lives alongside of what thus saith the Word of God. And uh, I was looking at uh, uh, the book of First John this morning. I thought Travis was going to uh, get into my message there. Uh, he hit First John two or three times this morning. But actually, if you look at First John and uh, study it diligently, you'll find out that John gives us about ten tests as to whether or not we are Christians or not. And so uh, I was only going to present five of them, but then Travis reminded me tonight's Super Bowl, so I probably better go ahead and do all ten of them, because if I let you out early, somebody's going to accuse me of doing it, because tonight's Super Bowl tonight, or Super Bowl night, and um, uh, as Wanda said, who cares? Uh, uh, when when uh, Tom Landry uh, left Dallas... Uh, I quit watching uh, football. Uh, uh, you know, I, I kind of enjoyed it, although I can honestly say I have never sat through an entire football game. Uh, uh, they're just too long for me to sit still that long. And um, uh, nothing has ever been that important. But let's look at, uh, and uh, let me get my glasses out. I have marked my Bible up. I, I loaned uh, Zephyr a book the other day where two creeds meet. And uh, I, when I got ready to give it to him, it dawned on me that I hadn't read it. So I gave him another book that I had read, and I said, uh, let me keep this one for a couple of days. And so uh, the first of the week, I sat down, and I read it all the way through. And uh, when I'm reading, I like to underline. Uh, it does a couple of three things. Number one, it keeps me awake. Uh, number two, it keeps my mind on what I'm reading. I, I don't read a paragraph and then a moment later think, well, what did that paragraph say? When I am underlining uh, thoughts within it. So it helps me to stay on track and so forth. And I have uh, marked this book up. If you can see from there, uh, uh, you see uh, sometimes I have a hard time figuring out what uh, the book says because I have marked it so many times. I, uh, my lines aren't always straight, and sometimes I mark over a letter that I can't uh, extinguish what it is saying there. But anyway, uh, let's look at test number one. Uh, here, uh, test number one, we, we find um, uh, in chapter one, in verses five through seven, I believe it is, if I can, um, if and I can uh, make this out. Um, but notice what he says here. By the way, uh, it's interesting, if you've never studied it, uh, if you uh, would like to count them, if I'm not mistaken, it's been a long time since I've done that, but uh, certainly John uses the word no more than any other writer. And 39 times in these five chapters, John uses that word no. And, and he says here, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and we walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. How do I know whether or not, uh, if, if I begin to... Um, search out myself if I get come to know uh, myself uh, and I lay myself alongside the scriptures how do I know whether or not I'm really uh, a Christian John says the way is to walk in the light now uh, all throughout the Bible uh, light is a symbol of righteousness and darkness is a symbol of wickedness and so when he's talking about walking in the light he's, he's talking about walking a According to what thus saith the word of God, when we walk in darkness, uh, we're walking contrary to what thus saith the word of God. And, and so we want to know whether we want to examine ourselves and know whether or not we're walking, uh, whether or not we are a, a child of God, 
then uh, all we need to do is to examine, am I walking in the light of God's word? Uh, is it truly a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, as the psalmist said uh, uh, there in the Old Testament? So test number one is found in uh, chapter one, verse four through seven. If we look at the uh, uh, second uh, uh, test here, look in uh, uh, chapter um, uh Two, I believe it is. So let's look in chapter 2 at verses 4 through 6. Uh, here we have a second test here. Test number 2. And hereby, we're in um, uh, verse 4. I've got verse 3 there. Verse 4, well, let's look 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. How do we know if we know him or not? He said, uh, hereby know we that we know him if we keep his commandments. Now, none of us ever keep to the letter of the law uh, every commandment that is written in God's word. I, I praise the Lord. I, uh, we're not judged by the letter of the law, but by the spirit uh, uh, Jesus teaches us. But look at verse four. He that uh, saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth Notice his word. Uh, when uh, John is talking about keeping his commandments, he's talking about living according to his word. Uh, but whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. So how do I know whether or not uh, I am, uh, uh, how do I prove myself? How do I know myself whether or not uh, I am pleasing unto God? Whether or not I am a uh, true child of God or not? Uh, well, I know by laying my life alongside of the Word of God and seeing whether or not my uh, life, my, my walk matches up to what thus saith the um, uh, word of God. Am I walking in the light as he is in the light? Um, am I living? Am I abiding in him? Uh, thus walking as he walked. Um, and, and then uh, there is a third test. Look in, again in chapter 2. No, let's go to chapter 3. In chapter 3, look at verse 8 through 11. It says, Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. If indeed we are sight, then darkness is past. So we have we have stepped out of darkness. We have stepped into the light as we sung here a little while ago. Uh, and um, uh, we are now that new creature in Christ Jesus. So he says here, he that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now as brother Travis uh, did a good job this morning uh, uh, in the Sunday school uh, they're talking about uh, how we are to love one another he that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him but he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Uh, uh, how sad it is that uh, so many uh, Christians who are those who profess Christians, so many who make up the church often uh, has a, uh, they, they fail to demonstrate uh, a concern, a love for others, um, especially those uh, that um, are in darkness this morning about 2.20 uh, I changed the uh, I changed the deal on my phone. It used to go, uh, you know, uh, every time I get a message, something it would go something like da -da -da -da, something like that, and I get so sick of hearing that till I changed it the other day. Now then, it's a little kid giggling, you know. And uh, about two twenty this morning, uh, I heard <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, thought. I looked at the clock, 2.20. Who is calling me at 2.20, you know? Uh, Lois has got her little 
a skipper laying over there and I told her, I said, I was just skipper uh, over there, probably dreaming about something funny. Uh, but I did get my phone uh, open, pulled it up, and there was an individual and they said, uh, uh, Lord, pray for me and mention something that they needed me to pray about. And um, uh, so I uh, got up and washed my eyes out to where I could see the letters and then text them back and said, first of all, let me thank you. I'm honored that you value my prayers enough that uh, to call uh, at this time of night. And so I thank you for uh, calling me. And uh, then I uh, called him back. I didn't get an answer when I called them back. So I texted him back and uh, tried to encourage them concerning the thing that they had texted me about. But um, uh, we need to have a genuine love for one another. It doesn't matter what time of day or night. It doesn't matter what the need. It doesn't matter. Uh, it just doesn't matter. We are to love one another. We're to be concerned for one another. And uh, we are to uh, uh, rejoice uh, in the opportunity to be a blessing to one another. Uh, look at um, uh, chapter um, 2, verses 15 through 17 here for a test number 4. It says here, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And then goes on, and uh, we all know the rest of it there, uh, for uh, that which is in the world, the lust of the eye, the lust of Christ, the pride of life. But as I thought of that, well, what does he mean there by love not the world? Well, the world has a standard that they live by. And uh, uh, one of the key standards of the world is, uh, someone has said is to get all you can, can all you get, and then sit on the can. Uh, but uh, certainly the world has a standard that uh, is totally the opposite of the standard that God has in his word. The world has priorities that we don't have. It's sad, we were talking a while ago about uh, Brother uh, uh, Eddie said, you know, if the Lord come back tonight or something to that effect, uh, uh, I said, if the Lord comes back tonight, probably there will be a lot of red-faced Christians going up who uh, God caught sitting at home because the priority tonight uh, is more upon who's going to win a football game, which won't make one dime's worth of difference to anybody except the people who go there. It'll cost them pretty highly. And then the people who play in it, uh, uh, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll reward them pretty highly, even if they lose. Uh, but uh, uh, to the average individual out here, uh, it's not going to have any bearing on anything, and yet we put such high priority upon it uh, uh, that some churches uh, even have a uh, early church or a later church, but during the service, during that time they're playing there, uh, they have fellowship whereby they can let those who want to see the game see the game. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, the priorities that we place up on uh, the standard that the world sets uh, it is another way uh, that we uh, love the world. Uh, uh, but uh, Jesus or John goes ahead and explains what it means to love the world. Uh, to love the world is to uh, lust after the things that this body lust is after. It's to lust after the things that these eyes lust after. It's to uh, uh, love the things there that kind of builds us up or fills us with pride and so forth. And so uh, uh, we can check ourselves. Uh, uh, what do I really love? Uh, what standard do I live by? What's my priorities uh, in life? And um, uh, when we uh, when we uh, uh, look at that and lay it alongside of what's important to us, where are our priorities lie? What uh, do we uh, uh, put? What priority we put up on the things the flesh lusts after, the things the eye lusts after? 
so uh, uh, number four, he says, they love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And he goes on to say in verse 17, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. There's the key uh, to uh, not loving the world. Uh, the key is is to um, love the things uh, that uh, uh, God loves. And uh, it's to hate the things that the world hates. Uh, number five, look at chapter three, uh, verses five through ten there. And actually, let's make number five, uh, verse chapter two, verse uh, uh, twenty nine. And um, look at uh, verse 29 there. Um, and um, uh, when I was going through my Bible, I kind of overlooked this one. And so I made the fifth one uh, uh, down here in chapter 3. But I notice in verse 29, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of God. How do I know whether I'm a Christian or not? By whether or not I live a life of righteousness, whether or not I have uh, confessed my sins, whether or not I have invited Jesus to come into my heart, whether or not I believe by faith that God has forgiven me and is coming to my heart, and now then uh, the Spirit of God is living within me. I mean, that's the only way that we can live a righteous life. Uh, and um, so um, uh, we could say uh, number five is it uh, uh, is uh, uh, how we uh, whether or not we are walking in righteousness. Um, and now then we'll make number five, number six. Um, uh, look, look at number six in chapter three, verses five through ten. He says, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him uh, sinneth not. That is, doesn't practice sin. Remember this morning we were talking about the fact there that John said, My little children, I beseech you that you sin not, but if you do. Uh, we're still living in a generated body. That doesn't give us the right to sin, but certainly if we truly love God, uh, then we're not going to practice sin. It's not going to be our mode of life. Um, and so he says, uh, whosoever abideth in him uh, sinneth not. That is, in the sense that he does not practice uh, sin. It is not his lifestyle. It is not his priorities, if we could say. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither knoweth him. Um, again, uh, we have to uh, uh, recognize that uh, uh, what John is saying here is not uh, if a person uh, whose heart is towards God, but he stumbles or uh, he is tempted, taught off guard, deceived by Satan and commits a sin. Uh, that's not who John is talking about. John is talking about that individual who practices sin uh, and uh, consequently uh, if our lifestyle of one of just gratifying the flesh. Uh, lust and act of whatever it is that our eyes sees. Uh, uh, living a prideful life, uh, uh, then we are practicing sin. And uh, we who do that, he says, uh, 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 neither knoweth him. And so now let's look at number six, which would be number seven. Uh, and uh, number uh, seven would be in chapter three. Look at verses 14 through 18. I believe it is. Notice how he starts almost all of these with no. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Uh, what did Jesus say about murder? Uh, you know, he said, you know, it is written, in the law thou shalt not kill, but I say to you, whosoever uh, aided his brother without a cause, 
uh, has committed murder already in his heart. So whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Uh, what would cause us to hate a brother? Uh, but something that that brother has or something that brother is uh, that we have not or that we are not. Uh, and uh, consequently, we have uh, a disdain for uh, him. Uh, Jesus said it's the uh, same thing as murder. And John repeats Jesus here. Let's look at uh, uh, test number seven um, in, in chapter uh well, that's what we just did that, didn't we? So let's look at uh, uh, number eight, if I can find number eight. It's in chapter four. I believe it is uh, uh, in uh, verses six through nine here in chapter four. Um, this would be uh, uh, number um, number um, six, which is actually number seven. We, uh, verse 6 through 9 says, or 6 through 8, he says, We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. Now, this is John writing. He's writing to uh, uh, churches there. And he says, Listen, uh, if you know God, then you're, you'll hear what I have to say. Uh, because he's writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not uh, God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. But uh, going back to uh, verse 6, sir, we are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. Uh, when, when, uh, when we want to know, when we want to know regardless of what our body craves, when we want to know no matter what uh, uh, the world uh, says about it, when what we want to know is what thus saith the word of God, and how do I apply it to my life? We are anxious to hear the word of God. And uh, when we're anxious to hear the word of God and we study the word of God, uh, uh, you know, uh, I spend a whole lot more time hearing the word of God uh, when I don't hear anything. But I see the words of God as I study it. Uh, uh, God speaks uh, uh, to my heart and uh, uh, God uh, uh, sometimes corrects me in my thinking or God uh, condemns me for some act that I've done or convicts me would maybe be a better word of something that I failed to do. Uh, when I read that, uh, then I'm thankful that the fact that God loves me enough uh, to chasten me. God loves me enough uh, to rebuke me, uh, to reprove me when I err. And so uh, uh, when we are in a right relationship with God, we're going to want to hear the word of God. And uh, uh, when we hear preaching, uh, uh, if you step in my vehicle and the radio's on, it's going to be on 95.1 or uh, 91.7 or 97.1. I get those two confused. Anyway, it's going to be on uh, uh, the family uh, radio or it's going to be on Baca, one or the other there. Because uh, when I'm behind my steering wheel, it's an opportunity for me to study. Because when I'm listening to a preacher preach, uh, I, when I'm going down the road, whether it's safe or not, that's debatable. But when I'm going down the road, and uh, especially I like preachers who, uh, you know, point one, and then they come to point two, and they go back after they get through with point two, they go back and remind you what point one, point two was, and now then they give you point three. Uh, I, I can listen to Adrian Rogers preach, uh, and when he used to preach it, I could preach the message that Adrian Rogers preaches. Sometimes uh, I hear a preacher preach, uh, that they have a, they have a uh, series that comes on every afternoon, I can't even remember the name of it, but they answer your questions. I like to listen to the questions, um, uh, but I don't consider any preacher infallible. 
including me. Uh, but when they asked a question uh, and I disagree with their answer, uh, I say to myself, I, I disagree with that. And immediately uh, a scripture will come to my mind, which I feel uh, contradicts uh, the answer that the individual just gave. Uh, but we're, we're going to love to God's word. We're going to love to hear God's word. Uh, uh, and then uh, number uh, eight, I guess it is. Uh, look at chapter four, verse 12 through 21. He said, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we, notice that know again, hereby know we that we dwell in him. How do I know that? Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. Uh, anybody quote uh, Romans 8, 9? If any man have not the spirit of God, he is none of his. Uh, uh, hereby we uh, can know because uh, God's spirit is living within us and God's spirit is going to be true to God's word. He goes on to say, and we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. Uh, I believe uh, that we as Christians uh, delight in an opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus or to uh, look for opportunities to share, uh, to give a testimony of Jesus. Verse 15 says, whoso shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. Uh, remember in chapter 2, verse 28 there, uh, John uh, admonishes uh, his listeners. He said, uh, now abide ye in him, that when he uh, uh, shall appear, you may stand with confidence and not be ashamed at his coming. Well, John is saying here, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness, that we may stand with confidence of, um, in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. But it was talking on the way down to church tonight, the fact that uh, uh, some people uh, uh, are fearful, or, or, I believe it was the word you, of Jesus' is coming, but that he looks forward to it. And um, our friend John says, uh, closes out uh, the book of Revelations, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Paul said there that there's a crown of righteousness laid up for those who love his appearing. Uh, and um, uh, at another verse in mine, it escapes me at the moment, but my uh, friend, listen, uh, uh, yeah, Titus 2, 13, uh, looking for that glorious, superior, and great God of our Savior, Jesus Christ. My friend, uh, I believe that we can measure the depth of our love for Him by the earnestness in which we long for, or look forward to, or sing about uh, His coming and uh, uh, looking forward to it with expectation. We love him, verse 19, because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. Notice how many times John uh, keeps going back to love there. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he's not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loves God loves his brother. And then number nine, look at chapter five, verse one through five. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that beget, loveth him also that is begotten of him. That is, everybody who loves God, who beget uh, his son Jesus Christ, is going to love his son. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 
Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, test number uh, nine it is there. And then let's look at test number ten. Uh, look in John, first John chapter five, uh, verses uh, let's look at verses twelve down through fifteen. He that has the Son has life. And he that has not the Son of God has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. I think that verse is confusing uh, uh, to some because uh, uh, we think because uh, what we think is best is what is best. And therefore we think that what we think is best surely uh, is pleasing unto God. But uh, I know what we sometimes think is best isn't necessarily uh, God's will. I mean, you recognize that uh, people would be living far beyond the age of 100 if God answered the prayer of every child of God who prays that his loved one won't die, even when it's within God's will that he dies. You see, uh, uh, both Moses uh, in Psalms 12, 90, or 90, 12 tells us where to number our days that we might apply wisdom. In other words, uh, God has a time. In Job chapter 14, 6, I mentioned this not too long ago, and in, in verse 1, 2, and 3, there he talks about the fact that he that's born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Uh, he springeth forth like a flower, but then he fadeth away. We get down to verse 6 there, he says there that... Uh, uh, and I'm not sure if I can quote it, I just went blank there, but uh, if you want to read a good verse, uh, read uh, Job uh, uh, chapter 14. Somebody got that uh, right quick? Uh, Job 14 verse 6 there. It talks about basically the fact that uh, God has our days and our months uh, uh, in his hands uh, and that God has a bound that we cannot go beyond. In other words, my friend, uh, no matter how uh, many miles I run a day, no matter how many weights I lift, no matter how many vitamins I take, no matter, no matter, no matter, no matter how many people are praying for me, I'm not going to live one day past the day that God has uh, designed for me to live. Can you say amen to that? Man. And and so, uh, hey, listen, uh, if I'm laying on my bed about to die and Lois is still here, uh, you think Lois is going to say, well, Lord, Lord, I know it's your will that Brother Larry dies, and so you just go ahead and take him. Uh, uh, I don't think that's going to be Lois's attitude. To the contrary, uh, Lois is going to be pleading with God. Let me live, you know, just a little longer, please, Jesus, you know. Uh, so just because we think that something is within God's will doesn't mean that it's in God's will. I read a, a book, and I've mentioned this sometime before, uh, not recently, I don't believe, but uh, I read a book about a preacher who was pastoring a church of 250, 300 people, and he had a heart attack. And he's laying in the hospital bed there. And he's praying, God, he's complaining to God. God, I don't have time for this. God, I've got, uh, I've got 300 people that's dependent upon me as their pastor. God, I don't need to be in this bed. But while he was in that bed, a book that God had been dealing with him for some time to write, he finally found time to write. And it sold several hundred thousand copies. So instead of ministering to 200 or 300, here he got to minister to several hundred thousand people. Uh, my friend, he would have not been there. If, if, uh, if, if God would have said the day before the heart attack, how would you like to have a heart attack today? I think I'm going to let you have a heart attack tomorrow. What If God said to you, if God spoke in your uh, conscious being, uh, I think I'm going to let you have a heart attack tomorrow. How many of us would say, 
Okay, God, I'm ready. Uh, go ahead. Uh, it's okay with me. Uh, God, please, let me have a heart attack. Because I just know it's your will. Because you told me that you were going to let me have a heart attack. Uh, we wouldn't if we prayed. If, if we, I mean, if we, if we failed it definitely enough, we would pray in God, don't let it happen. Uh, and, and so, see what I'm saying? Uh, my friend, when we know that it's in God's will, then we can have this confidence that we ask God for it. If God hears us because it's in His will, then we can know that we're going to have the answer that we asked of Him. But let's not get down on God. Let's not give up on prayer because of the fact that God doesn't answer a prayer that is so important to us that if God doesn't answer it, we're going to get angry with God. I, I'll say this and then I close. One of the mysteries of me is people all over this world, I think, uh, people who believe in God anyway, they will say, uh, Satan is a scandal, if you will. Satan is a thief. Satan is the sorriest uh, being ever created. But let something bad happens to us. <laughs> and do what do we say? God, why did you? <laughs> you know? God, how come you took my child? Or God, how come you let me get cancer? Uh, you know, uh, we, we, we profess with our mouths that Satan is a villain and that God is a good guy. But when something happens to us that we consider to be bad, we blame God for it instead of Satan. And we fail to realize sometimes that which seems bad to us is the best thing in the world that could happen to us. And so, if we really believe Romans 8, 28, then the next time what seems to be bad happens to you, don't blame God. Thank God. Amen. God, I know you're trying to accomplish something in my life that I'm resistant to. So God, forgive me. And thank you. Thank you for letting it happen. Uh, not too many of us get upset somebody calls us at 2.20 in the morning uh, and then won't answer their phone when you call back uh, somebody texts us at 2.20 in the morning and then won't uh, answer the phone when you call back uh, I just thought that individual must have some confidence in my prayers if he's going to wake me at 2.20 in the morning to ask me to pray for him. And so I text back and I said, thank you for calling me. I'm honored that you value my prayers. Now then, how can I help you? Uh, but I had to do that through text because I couldn't get him to answer the phone. I called him back, he didn't answer the phone. So I text to him. Anyway, hey, God is good, but uh, the next time you read, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 13 5 where Paul says examine yourself prove yourself know ye yourself whether or not you're really in Christ lest you should become reprobate meaning lest you should be rejected uh, turn over to 1 John and read those five little chapters and John will give you about ten ways you can test were they not? You're really where God wants you to be. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for these who've come out. God, we're blessed, God, uh, Lord, always to be in your house. God, always to, Lord, uh, draw from your word. We pray that God, something has been said tonight that will encourage somebody. And Lord, we just pray, Father, and everything that you will be glorified. I pray tonight, Father, that if one is uh, listens to this message over uh, YouTube, that, that God, it will cause them to examine themselves. That they'll look at these ten ways whereby they can measure whether or not they're truly loving God or not. And Father, I pray, God, that, Lord, uh, Father, they'll be made better for it. God, if they're lost, that they might be saved. 
We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand. Thank you, sis. Appreciate each one coming out.